So in our organic chemistry unit, we're going to work our way through the organic molecules, starting with carbohydrates. We're going to talk about lipids, I'll do one on proteins, nucleic acids, but here for carbohydrates, I've got a picture just to start um, talking about them, the most general, the most well-known carb, uh, glucose. All right, so they're all kinds of sugars, they're all simple sugars, um, these monosaccharides at least. If you have your organic compound chart in front of you, you can use it to follow along with what we're talking about. The top part of that chart asks what elements carbs are made of, and I have a picture, like I said, right here of glucose, uh, made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. This is true about all the organic molecules. They all have CHNO, at least. Some of them have nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, but carbs just have CHO, and they have it in a certain ratio. Um, let's see if we can figure it out. Glucose has a chemical formula of C6H12O6. This is a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio. And that's going to be true pretty much across the board for carbs. So if you're shown uh, a molecule that just says CHO, it could be a carb or it could be a lipid. But what's going to help you determine between the two is, that, is this ratio. Um, carbon to hydrogen to oxygen. So we look for that 1 to 2 to 1 ratio. That'll tell you is it a carbohydrate or is it a lipid. The basic unit. The basic unit of carbs is the monosaccharide. You put a bunch of monosaccharides together, you make up a carbohydrate. Recall that all of these organic molecules are polymers. They're macromolecules made up of several smaller molecules. And in this case, the smaller mo molecule is the monosaccharide. It's a simple sugar. Examples of, of monosaccharides, glucose, we talked about ribose is, um, is in RNA, it's a five carbon sugar in RNA. Deoxyribose is similar to ribose, but it is missing the oxygen, thus the deoxy part. It's a five carbon sugar in DNA. Uh, galactose is another form of, of a monosaccharide, and fructose is a fruit sugar in lots of different fruits. These have a sweet taste to them, um, they're soluble, and like I said, a monosaccharide, not only is it um, the basic unit, not only is it the monomer of carbs, but it's a type. So if you went down to your types column in your, in your chart, monosaccharide be, would be one of the types. Another type is a disaccharide. The third type, polysaccharide. So I'm just going to continue through the different types. A disaccharide, the prefixes can tell us a lot. Mono meaning one. This is one simple molecule. Put a couple monosaccharides together, you get a disaccharide. Here we are, joined by a dehydration reaction. Why is it called dehydration? Because uh, when you put monosaccharides together, you lose water. Here's an example. We're going to put glucose, two glucose molecules together. Here's a glucose, here's a glucose. We put them together, we're going in this direction, going through dehydration synthesis. You can see that. A uh, hydroxyl group is robbed from this monomer. A uh, hydrogen is robbed from this one. You put them together and you make water. There's your dehydration event showing up right there. And you have a bond extending from this oxygen. There it is. A bond extending between the two monomers. So now we went from two monosaccharides one there, one there, to a disaccharide in the expense of water. Water is lost. Now, <clears throat> the reverse can also happen. This disaccharide can be broken apart and form two monosaccharides. That's a process called hydrolysis. And what happens is that this bond gets bombarded by a water molecule. Just the reverse happens, breaks it up, and we get two monosaccharides. So going back Disaccharides examples, that was maltose that we just showed being formed. Two glucoses put together. You put a glucose and a galactose together, you make lactose. You put a glucose and a fructose together, you make sucrose. Sucrose you may recognize as table sugar. Lactose is a, is a sugar that's in dairy products. So if you don't um, have the enzyme lactase, uh, you're lactose intolerant, so you, you can't, uh, can't break this sugar down. 
we showed you disaccharides. Now you put more monosaccharides together, keep chaining them together through dehydration reactions, you get polysaccharides. They're polymers, many. All right, there's our, our prefix again. Many monosaccharides put together. Okay, examples of, uh, of polysaccharides we have down here. We have starch. Starch is how plants store their energy. So if we eat plants that are, are starchy, if we eat potatoes, if we eat pasta, we're going to obtain that energy from the plants via starch. Cellulose, once again in plants, it's in their cell walls. It gives them strength. It gives them support. Chitin is, is a polysaccharide that is in the shells, the exoskeletons of arthropods, of insects, of crabs. Um, I want to add another one here, glycogen. Glycogen, plants store their, some of their energy as starch. Animals can store some of their carbohydrate energy as glycogen. So if we're not storing our energy as lipids, we can also store it as glycogen as well. Give some a, a little bit of a, a long-term benefit. Not as much as lipids, uh, but some energy storage. We went through the elements. We went through the basic units, uh, the types and the examples. These were all examples, glucose, ribose, sucrose, starch, etc. How about the function? Well, monosaccharides and disaccharides, they function as quick energy. Ribose and deoxyribose, we're talking about things that make up our genetic material. All right, they make up our nucleic acids. We get down here, we have long-term energy storage in starch and glycogen and protection in the cell walls of plant cells and in the shells of arthropods. So we'll work our way through the different organic molecules. This was carbs. Um, stay tuned for another uh, screencast on lipids.